worshiping with us today. Let's get into the word. I'm in a series called Faith University and class is in session. Uh, let's, I want to read one scripture today. We're in part four of this series found in the gospel of Mark chapter number 11. I want to read verse 22 will be the only scripture we read for our foundational text. And this is what Jesus says. This is what he articulates to his audience. He says, have faith in God. That's it. I want to tag a title of this text. I want to talk from this subject in our time together today. Yesterday's price is not today's price. <laughs> yesterday's price is not today's price. In Mark chapter 11, we get to eavesdrop on a conversation that Jesus is having with his cohort, his mentees, his apprentices, his disciples. And Jesus, who is the ultimate, instruct, ultimate instructor, a powerful picture of what it means to effectively engage and elevate and evolve the minds of those that have submitted themselves to his leadership. Jesus, Jesus here makes an interesting statement after he models something in front of them. It's the, the two paths of learning we see with Jesus. It's experiential learning and informational learning. They had just observed his experience, and this is what the disciples did well, and I think those of us who are living in our current context need to do better at. Instead of simply being impressed by what Jesus did, they wanted to be educated from what Jesus did. So they asked him a question after Jesus causes this tree to wither regarding how he's able to accomplish this. And Jesus says something that I think is interesting. He simply says to them, have faith in God. This seems like a simple statement on the surface. But if we dig deeper into this, the details of this dialogue, we'll discover some diamonds that will help us develop our faith. He looks at people, watch this, who are following him already and says, have faith in God. They're already following him. And he tells those who are following him to have faith. So the statement have faith in God doesn't seem powerful or profound if we simply base it on the merits of what Jesus said. I'm telling you, we've got to move beyond just looking at what Jesus said and we've also got to observe and examine who Jesus said it to. He said have faith in God to people that we would automatically assume already have faith in God. I could see if he were talking to people who weren't disciples. I could see if he were talking to people who hadn't already left entrepreneurial endeavors like Peter to follow him. I could see if he were talking to people who had already not demonstrated and displayed a persuasion, a conviction, a belief that you are Christ and you are son of the living God and I have faith in what you said. I could see if he said this to anybody but them. I mean, they close to him. And he's saying people, he's saying to people that are close to him to have faith in him. Which suggests close to me is not the same as faith in me. Did you hear what I just said? Because this is what I've learned and I'm not going to bother this because this is dibbling and dabbling in the relational space. 
See, sometimes, sometimes, watch this. <laughs> Ooh, I can't believe I'm getting ready to go here, but I'm out here now. Yeah. See, sometimes closeness relationally is not an indication of revelation. Sometimes that's an indication of desperation. Some people, why am I here? Some people aren't with people because they really like them. Some people are with people because they don't like themselves enough. Somebody put some fire in the chat. They're not talking to me in the room. It's powerful because the fact that he says this statement is suggesting just because you're following me doesn't mean we don't need to talk about your faith. Why would he tell them to have faith in God? Maybe it's not because, maybe he didn't say that because they didn't have faith. Maybe he said that because they didn't have a certain type. <laughs> maybe they were stepping into a season where the faith they had and that had gotten them this far was inadequate and incapable to take them where he know they needed to go. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Yeah, maybe it's possible that the level of faith that they had in the past is not the level of faith that they would need to step into their future. Maybe, maybe Jesus <laughs> is trying to get them to see that you can do more than what you've done. But you can't do more than what you've done simply operating with the faith that you have. Watch this. So it's like Jesus is saying, you're trying to have more of this without developing more of that. And he said, I want to help you get the order right. So instead of trying to get more of this, let me help you develop more of that. And if you develop more of that, there is no this that will be outside the realm of becoming your that. I just need somebody in the chat to put this and that. And I just need somebody in the room to shout this and that. Yeah, Lord, I'm going to work on this because I believe if I fix this, you'll give me that. You know he's a this and that God. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. If they do this, then I'll hear from heaven. I'll forgive their sin and I'll heal the land. If you are willing and obedient, that's this. Then you will eat the fat of the land. That's that. He's a this and a that God. I say he's a this and a that God. I say he's a this and a that God. And my question to us is, have, been, have we been working on the wrong this? But the enemy's upset today. He's nervous and he's agitated because he knows God is deepening and developing the thing that's on the inside of you because when you get this right, you will no longer have to chase that. That is getting ready to start chasing you. Seek ye first the kingdom and its righteousness and all these things. See, I think when we look at the adequacy of anything, we simply are comparing it to the past. 
We could take something as simple as character development and say, I got good character. Why does God need to keep developing my character? It's not, he's not talking about the past. He said, I'm talking about the future. He said, why do I need to fix this? Why do I need to address this? Why do I, I need to alter this? Why, why, why do I need to give attention to this? It hadn't destroyed me in my past. And God's like, you keep talking about a space I don't live in. Are y'all hearing me? Forgetting those things that are behind. Remember not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I'll do a new thing. God's like, can we talk about your future? Can we stop talking about what you've done and so we can start talking about what I'm getting ready to do? Yeah, can we stop talking about where you come from and then I'll start talking to you about where we're going? Maybe he's saying have faith in God, not because they didn't have a certain type of faith in the past. Maybe he's saying have faith in God because he knows they needed a different type of faith for the future. Maybe God <laughs> is using Jesus in a historical context to articulate what our contemporary Fat Joe said about Jada Kiss after the locks and dip set battle. Maybe he's saying yesterday's price. Y'all are hearing me? It's not today's price. What was appropriate and okay and suitable yesterday is no longer appropriate and okay and suitable for today. Yesterday's price is not today's price. Yesterday's faith is not today's faith. Maybe Jesus is implicitly, subliminally teaching us that different types of faith are needed for different types of seasons. Did you hear what I just said? I said maybe he's saying different types of faith are necessary for different types of seasons. Yesterday's price is not today's price. And so what I wanna do in this class <laughs> here at Faith University is to hopefully use the scriptures as an educational instrument to expose to you the different types of faith that are present in the pages of the Bible so that you might see where you are and where you might need to go if you're going to grow to the next level. Are you following me here? Because in scripture I see four types of faith. I want to walk you through them. You ready? The first type of faith I see in scripture is what's called saving faith. Save, saving faith. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says this, for it is by grace you have been saved. Do you see that? But that, that's not where Paul stops talking, is it? Through faith. So what's grace? Grace is an unearned, undeserved, unmerited favor. It, it means somebody does something for somebody else, not because 
the person that they're doing it for is good. But they're doing it for somebody else because the person that's doing it is good. It's unearned favor. Did you hear what I just said? So Paul said the reason that we have been saved, rescued from life that is inconsistent with God's intention is because God has done us a favor. He says, I'm going to save your life because I'm good. I'm going to change your life because I'm good. I'm going to fix what's broken because I'm good. I'm going to heal what's restored because I'm good. And if we would honestly audit our life, many of us would have to admit that our progress and our protection has not been a consequence of our goodness. It has honestly been a consequence of his because you ate even when you didn't tithe. Let me... Where my real... Okay. No, no, no. He still kept food on the... He kept food in your house, even when you weren't giving to his house. You aren't eating because you've been good. You've been eating because he's been good. We reaped some of what we sowed. But we didn't reap all of what we sowed. Because of a biblical concept called mercy. So come on. Grace, if you just do, grace is when God gives you and I what we, watch this, don't deserve. Mercy is when God doesn't give us what we do deserve. Are y'all ready? Mercy is a harvest interrupter. It means that we sowed some bad seeds. We should have reaped a bad harvest. But mercy intervenes and says, I'm not going to allow them to reap the way they should reap. I'm going to interrupt that harvest and give them another chance to run on and see what the end's going to be. I know we pause and we Self praise God, watch this, for the times he interrupted and blocked calamity. I want to know, is there anybody in the room and anybody watching online that will say, Dr. D, I'm going to praise God, watch this, not just for blocking calamity. I'm going to praise God for blocking some consequences. Where's my real church? Yeah, that, it's some stuff that should have took me out should have ruined my life should have ruined my reputation and it would have been justified and warranted but he looked beyond my faults and he saw my knees where's my musician stay close to your weapon stay by the weapon Paul said, it is a gift of God. We're, we're saved by grace. But he says, through faith. So he says, faith has got to believe that grace exists. Faith got to believe, well, God, if you're going to give it to me, then give it to me. D did you hear what I just said? So the gift of salvation, John 3, 16, has been given to the whole world. But the entire world has not experienced this gift. Because for, in order for this gift to be experienced, so here it is, the, the, the gift of salvation has been deposited into the bank accounts of the whole world. But something in your account is not the same as, watch this, that thing that's in your account being experienced in your life. You need a withdrawal slip. Or a card and a code in order to access what's been deposited for you and salvation's been deposited into the accounts and some people have not 
experienced it because they don't have the withdrawal slip of faith that believes God just wants to save my life because he good. They still trying to earn it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, this is important, but I think this, here's the assumption we've made. The assumption we've made is that saving faith is the only kind of faith I need. And all saving faith does is get you saved. Did you hear what I just said? I said all saving faith does is gets us saved. Saving faith helps us access salvation. But saving faith does not bring about elevation. So it is possible to be saved and stuck. Saved and sad. Saved and stagnant. Saved and insecure. Saved and hyper competitive. Saved and still passive aggressive. I'm about to shake your theological tree. Come on. Yeah. Saved and timid. Because one type of faith gives me access to the person of Christ. But it takes another type of faith to give me access to the promises of Christ. Am I making sense? So it's possible to have saving faith, but saving faith in the only kind of faith I need. Can I give you another one? I said, can I give you another one? If you're in the chat, I want you to put another one. Put that in the chat, put another one. Can I, here it is, okay. One, saving faith. Here's two, surrogate faith. <laughs> Surrogate faith. Somebody say, now, now Pastor Darius, what, what, what's, what's surrogate faith now? Okay. What's a surrogate mother? What does a surrogate do? Woo! She carries something that somebody else is actually going to benefit from. <laughs> she's, she's not carrying it for herself she's carrying it for somebody else now watch this how many of you have heard of uh, uh, give me a hand emoji in the chat and wave your hand at me in the room if you've heard of intercessory prayer let me see Okay, so I don't have to over explain that. So you've heard of that. So you're familiar with that term? Standing in the gap, right? Standing in the gap for someone else. All right. So inter intercession is not just limited to prayer. Intercession is a concept that can also be applied to praise. Where you are thanking God. Not for what he's done for you. You are thanking God for what he's done for somebody else. Watch this. Are y'all ready for this? Some of us have done it because God did something for people we know and love. And they didn't have enough spiritual awareness or spiritual sense to even know it was God. So they said, I got lucky. And you're saying, that had nothing to do with luck. That was blessed. And if you don't have enough spiritual sense to praise God for that, I'm going to praise him for your scholarship. I'm going to praise him for your promotion. I'm going to praise him for your opportunity. Somebody give God an intercessory praise right now. Surrogate faith. It's when you carry faith on behalf of someone you know and love when they can't carry it themselves. 
Dr. D, is that in the Bible? All in the Bible. In John 11, a man named Lazarus had passed away, but his sisters went to Jesus on his behalf. And they said, even though he's dead, even now, you can raise him up. Jesus walked over to that tomb and said, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus came leaping out of that tomb and he didn't believe for himself because he had passed away. So the reason he got a miracle was not because of his faith. He was dead. The reason he got a miracle was because of his sister's faith. Yeah. And for some of you, God, your next level is surrogate faith. He's saying there are people I've assigned you to. And they like Lazarus. They're not physically dead though. They spiritually dead. And he said, I want to use your faith to bring them back to life. Where you look at them in the eye and say, it's okay. If your faith is depleted, it's okay. If you're suffering with faith fatigue, it's okay. If you feel like your faith is fragile, if you can't depend on yours, borrow some of mine. I want somebody right now to speak out loud an affirmation of faith for somebody that you love and say, you're going to get through this. Put it in the chat. Yeah, you're going to get through this. You're gonna, and if you don't have faith to get you through it, borrow some of mine. If you don't have belief to get you through it, borrow some of mine. If you don't have the conviction that you're going to come out of this, borrow some of mine. Surrogate faith. Are y'all all right? I got to go. All right, number three, number three, number three, specific faith. Now, this will mess me up right here. This will mess me up. In Acts chapter 14, text says that Paul's on a missionary journey in a place called Lystra. And it said, in Lystra, there sat a man who was lame. He had been that way from birth. He had never walked. So this is a person that's been stuck or immobile in the area for as long as he could remember. So he's believing to do something he's never done before. Let me reread that again. I want to make sure you didn't miss that. There said a man who was lame. That's a metaphor for immobility or stuckness. And nobody's lame in all areas, but everybody's lame in some area. Right, so some people say he was lame. No, not lame like 2021 lame. <laughs> he lame, he lame. No, not lame, lame. <laughs> they had lame people in the Bible? No, lame in the sense that he couldn't walk. So he's immobile, stuck, stagnant in the area, and he can never remember a season where he had victory there. And I know we're not really accustomed to being like overly transparent in church, but I do think if we honestly audit our lives, there might be an area or two where we can say, as long as I can remember, I've been lame there. He had been that way from birth and had never walked. And as he listened to Paul, as he was speaking, Paul looked directly at him and saw that he had faith to be healed. Don't miss that. He did not say, 
he saw he had faith to be saved. He said, he saw he had faith to be healed. He has a specific predicament. And Paul saw this man actually has faith that will help him overcome this specific predicament. Because watch this, what I've learned is, are y'all ready for this? Most of our faith is predicated on the predicament. Now I probably shouldn't be that way, but if we're gonna be honest, it's like, okay, can God help me pay a light bill? Okay, I believe that. Can he get me debt free? I don't know about that. Because the faith is predicated on the predicament. So who's my question? Here's my question. Who's sovereign? Your savior or the situation? If our savior's sovereign, it doesn't matter the size of the situation. As long as God is the one that has the final say, as long as God is the only one who sits in the seat of the righteous judge who can render a verdict in any and every situation. Some people have specific faith to come out of one level, but they don't have faith to go in one. They got faith to start, but not faith to finish. Faith, <laughs> faith to walk in, but not faith to walk out. And specific seasons require a specific type of faith. Let's pause for the cause of reflection. Is your faith predicated on a predicament in a certain area? And is there an area where God's trying to grow and groom your faith specifically? He said, I'm not just trying to develop your faith. I'm trying to develop your faith. Oh, my time's up. I'm done. I'm trying to develop your faith in this. I don't know what your this is. All of us have a different this. Are y'all ready for this? Are y'all ready? Are you sure? Because this, this is not on my notes. This hot from the press. This hot bread getting ready to come out of the oven. Do you want it? This is God trying to grow and groom your faith. in what he put in you. Are y'all ready for this? In Numbers 13, Israel didn't go in the promised land not because they didn't believe in God enough, it was because they didn't believe in what God had put in them enough. It got quiet there, so that one hit home, didn't it? What if the issue is, isn't, you, you don't, sometimes it's, the issue isn't that we don't believe it can be done. The issue is, you don't believe you can. This is old school, Brother Rock, Holy Ghost preaching this morning. He coming in your driveway, ringing your doorbell, sitting on your couch in your living room next to you, poking you in the shoulder saying, I'm talking to you. For some of us, the issue isn't we don't believe it can be done. It's we don't believe we can do it. I'm done. Number four. Their supernatural faith. Listen to what Jesus says in Luke 18, 27. What is impossible with man 
is possible with God. Now watch this. Are y'all ready for this? Let's, let's be honest. Can we be honest? It's one thing to have faith for something that's unlikely yet still reasonable. God, I'm believing for this. It's unlikely, but you know, like, it's naturally possible for that to happen. It's another thing to have faith for something that is not only unlikely, but by human standards is unreasonable. It's like a woman in the Old Testament named Sarah who had a baby in her 90s. That's, that's not just unlikely. That's unreasonable. It's like a, a, a teenager named David defeating a military trained specialist named Goliath with a rock. See, don't spiritualize it, y'all. He had a slingshot, but it was a rock in there. Come on now, it wasn't a spike rock. It was a rock. The Bible says they were smooth stones. I would see if they had some jagged edges or something. Come on. That's unreasonable. But when you're able to believe something that doesn't necessarily contradict reason, but transcends human reasoning, that's supernatural faith. And all throughout scripture and history, we see God doing supernatural things for and through people with supernatural faith. Here's a word for it. Many is a buzzword. Many of you are probably familiar with it, coined by Mike Todd. Crazy faith. It just is crazy. But he says it's only crazy until it happens. I'm not your example, Jesus is. But I'm an example of a person just like you who's trying to walk it out. So when I use myself as an example, I'm not using myself as an example to say I'm your example. I'm not. Jesus is. But I do want to be an example of a person who's trying to walk this out. And what I am telling you is this. There is so much that I would have never started and would have never accomplished if I had relegated my faith to human reasoning. Did you hear what I just said? These churches we have would not exist. If we're just relegated to human reasoning. I'm sure people from my town, my city have done great and amazing things. I'm just talking about people that I knew. You couldn't look at people who grew up where I grew up and kill Michael, Mississippi and think logically I should have an expectation. for God to do anything significant with my life. But what is impossible with man is possible with God. And so today, my prayer is that God would help you and this is what I'm not going to do. I love you so much. And so I'm, I'm not going to even act like I can do more for you than I can do. There are some things only God in the person of the Holy Spirit can do. And that is show you which one of these levels you're supposed to lean into. So some may come to me and say, Pastor, well, which one should I, which one should I get? I'm confused. That's why you need the Holy Spirit. And that's why, and God designed it that way so that you don't make an idol out of me or the Bible. God's like, no, for some stuff, you got to come to me. 
He says, I'm going to have Daniels explain it to you and make it clear and make it plain and I'm going to use him to speak to you about it but then you're going to have to come to me. I say, now what do I do with what I heard? And which part of this applies to me in this season of my life and what are my next steps? Thank you, Father. So I'm getting ready to pray for you and I'm praying that God will help you locate your faith and that he would show you where you're supposed to lean into in this season of your life father I thank you I thank you for your word I thank you for speaking to us today and I just pray in the name of Jesus that our eyes will be open to locate us to find us <laughs> to see where you want to groom and grow our faith. I pray right now, Father, for, according to Romans 1.11, an impartation of the spiritual gift of faith. Hmm. Somebody's in a season where they need it swiftly and supernaturally. And I pray that you would give them that. Lord, I even pray, thank you, Father. I pray for a revival of faith for those who are in this room who had it but lost it and they recognize I need it back. Lord, help me to believe again. So I pray today that you would set our faith on fire. That we would believe you in ways we have not believed you before. For somebody, Father, watching is saving faith. For somebody is surrogate faith for somebody is specific faith for somebody is supernatural faith would you would you just would you just put it on their heart would you just cause one of those to stick out more than the other to make it known and clear to them <laughs> hallelujah you're next for their life lord i pray against and i do believe it's influenced by a spirit father i pray against the spirit of give up we will not rest on our laurels we will not settle and accept less than your best for our life we pray against the spirit that influences people to settle manipulating people into believing nothing more is possible Lord, would you break and uproot that mentality, that mindset, and set your people free to believe without boundaries. I pray that this would be the spirit in our houses personally. I also pray that it would be the spirit of this house corporately. I pray for corporate faith right here in and through Change Church that we would believe in ways we never believed before. We thank you. We're in a season where you're doing a new thing. And we say in the words of that great song, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. In Jesus' name.